So this optional section will be for designers that are trying to select their size tolerances. What size tolerance do I, do I put on the hole and what size tolerance do I put on the shaft? And it turns out we've been putting holes and shafts together for a number of years. So they created a standard for guidance on what size tolerances you put on. Now these standards are the B4.1 and B4.2. These will be replaced soon with a new standard, Y1439, and just brings these concepts into the Y14 series of standards. These are also shown in the machinery handbook as well. So when you're looking at fits between parts, we say that there's three main types of fits. Running and sliding fits, locational fits, and force fits. So running and sliding fits are going to be for translating shafts, bushings, bearings, basically anything that moves. Locational fits are usually stationary objects that you locate in one place. Now there can be clearance there and there can be interference depending on whether you choose the locational clearance fits or the locational interference fits. Now the force fits are usually high bore pressures so you're going to have to have heavy machinery that puts them together. Now a couple notes on these running and sliding fits, they're always going to have some positive min clearance for lubrication. You'll never have a line-to-line -line fit on a running and sliding fit because you want some room there for some lubrication between the pieces. Now the locational clearance fits, these are usually pieces that you're going to assemble and disassemble, so pilots, dowels, and other alignment features like that. Then we also have some no-slop interference fits, so that's going to be like pressed in dowel pins, you put them together once and stay like that. And the force fits again are going to be your high bore pressures for high forces and torsion stresses. This graphic in the standard shows it really well too, how the hole tolerance is going to be your shaded and the shaft tolerance is your black. And they show how the running and sliding fit, and if you notice, but there's always a minimum clearance between these pieces, always a min clearance between these. And they range anywhere from RC1, which is your close translating shafts, running up to RC9, which are your loose fit bearings. Your clearance locational fits, they start off as line to line between the pieces for the LC1 through LC5, and then they start getting some positive min clearance to make them easier to assemble. The force fits are going to always be a shaft bigger than the hole, and that's how you get that interference fit. The force fits are much heavier bore pressures there than just your locational interference fits with just a pressed in bearing or something. And the transition fits, they call it transition because sometimes it's clearance and sometimes it's interference depending on how the size tolerances work out. All right, so let's show how these fits would be used on a drawing. So first we'll look at an application of a pilot shaft in a hole. And we want our nominal size to be about 1.8 inches. What type of fit do you think we would pick for this type of application? Locational clearance, probably interference fit or force fit or running and sliding fit. I think we'd want a locational clearance for this. So then we would select LC3 and say locational clearance is what we want. Okay, so we have two items then, nominal size 1.8 and the LC3 fit that we want. Then you go through these series of charts to line those up. So here is your class LC3. These are these series of charts and then we'll find what is our size limit. There it is. So that would be between one inch 0.19 to 1.97. So you line those up and these are the numbers that we should be putting onto our drawing. So notice that you have information for a hole and you have information for a shaft and they'll tell you the minimum clearance. Now these values are going to be in thousands of an inch. So when they say 1.6 there, that's going to be 1.6 thousandths of an inch times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so let's pull those numbers off the drawing. So we had an H8 plus 1.6 minus 0, and an H7 shaft plus 0 minus 1. So when we write that on the drawing, we need to take our nominal size, 1.8, and add the 1.6 thou, subtract the 0, and same thing for the shaft, your plus 0, and then your minus 1, those would be the numbers you'd see on the drawing. Another way you might see them is you'd say a diameter of 1.8, and then you'll have plus 0, 0, 1, 6, and minus 0, 0, 0, 0. So there you have it. You put those numbers on your drawing and you'll have a guaranteed performance of an LC3 fit.